everyone. Welcome back to Lemon Tree Corner. Uh, this week in the studio, we have a fun hobo bag in our year of bags. So we're coming along quite nicely on the year of bags. I've got a lot of patterns ready to go for us, but also um, I had to pay my business sales tax uh, just a few weeks ago, and I was adding up all the sales from last year and realized that the Lollipop Lane, the show closest to me, the craft fair, made almost as much money as the fancier craft fair and the booth fee is a lot less. So I think I am gonna sign up for that one again this year. The sign up date is towards the end of this month, which has me thinking I need to make some smaller things. So I have a bunch of Maya wristlets saved up ready to make. So I can make some of those, just kind of the 16 to 20, 22 price range just so that I have more of those types of those types of items ready to sell and is also thinking about the sachets. So I have all of those lavender blossoms that I bought. So I think we should try making a sachet coming up pretty soon just to see like that's an easy thing I could put in production. So we will kind of sprinkle those in throughout here and I might just I might just take over one of our weeks to um, make the Maya wristlets, even though we've already done that on this channel. <laughs> so uh, just trying to gear up for the craft fairs. It's super hot here in Southern California. So I have my bubbly, it's not gonna focus. This one is pineapple. I really like the mango and the pineapple. So just kind of been living on these the last few weeks. But without further ado, let's take a look at the bag we're making this week. It is the Finch Hobo bag. I've made one of these before. I believe it's in the shop or it was sold, I can't remember. Um, but it's just super cute. It's 15 by eight and a half. So it's just a nice slouchy hobo bag. It goes over your shoulder. There's really no hardware. It's just a zipper on the inside. But the way you sew this together, it kind of has this puffed out feel to it, which is really nice. And this one got an A minus, so it's one of my favorites. I've got two sets of fabrics lined up to make with make this bag with, but this week we are gonna be using this beautiful fabric. So, is this Rifle Paper Company? What is this one? Cotton and Steel. I always get my cotton and steel and rifle paper company mixed up. So this is this beautiful cotton and steel kind of peachy, peachy orangey uh, floral. And then I'm pairing that with this totally cool, you can't see it, with this totally cool stripe. So it's kind of a dark green background with kind of a lilac pink stripe in it. And this is Tula Pink. Tula Pink True Colors. So that's where this one comes from. But I felt like they went together because the, um, the leaves in here have that, that stripe effect to them. So I thought those would be cool together. And then we're just gonna use our plain green zipper this week. So we just have this really pretty kind of forest green. And then the pulls are the same green color. So we don't have to worry about Matching hardware, not that there's hardware in this bag anyway. So it's just a nice fun bag to make. I really like the way that it looks in the end and it looks totally polished. So that's like an extra bonus. It looks very fashionable. So I hope you join me on the journey this week and just remember if at any time you're watching the video and enjoying it, I would love it if you would hit the subscribe button and come join us on this journey. Uh, it's really great to have everybody in this community make a comment on the video, thumbs up, anything you do to interact with the video tells YouTube that people are enjoying my content and it pushes the content out to other people. I would greatly appreciate that. Go ahead and grab a cool beverage and let's get to making this bag. Okay, welcome back everybody. We're going to start this week off by crossing this project off my to-do list. It's been sitting here for quite some time and just taking up room on my table. So I have to try and find 
my hooks. There we go. And my beads. I'm going to use for this project. Okay. And I got to rewatch the video because it's been a while now. But we're just going to go ahead and sew this guy together, weave in our ends, and call it a day. We'll put him with the other bags that we finished. And I've got to price these out. I'm going to try selling these. Obviously, these would be a better uh, summer item, but I'm going to try and sell them at the craft fairs this fall and see how far we get there. If anybody goes for them or not. And then I do want to try doing the um, sachets. So I think I will start. I don't know, it's hard. <laughs> I kind of want to have like a floral fabric for the sachets, but then another part of me just thinks I should use like the Hawaiian fabrics and stuff because I have a lot left over of those. So I guess I could try both and see. Obviously, I would want a Hawaiian one, but that doesn't mean everybody else is going to want one. Um, I would use some fall or Christmas fabrics as that would be a really nice Christmas stocking stuffer for people to give. Um, just not sure how that would go over, but I guess if we were going to stack the deck in our favor, I should probably look through the scraps that I have of Christmas fabric um, because I will be selling these in the fall which means I could just sell them as like market them as great Christmas presents that sounds good maybe I'll start with one Hawaiian one for me and then some Christmas ones if I like the way they turn out and I don't know whether I should just do a square shape or whether I should do a heart shape. I feel like a heart shape would be nicer, but uh, then I got to make a template and cut it out correctly and sew around the heart shape. So I feel like a square would just be easier. And then I'm not sure if I want to do, um, if I want to do like a string coming out for you to hang it or whether I just want to make it like a traditional sachet that you would stick in your underwear drawer kind of thing. Okay, we have we have our finished Tobago bag. Yay! So I um, tried to remember what I did the first time, which is I just made my own thing here. I don't know that I did it the same way. Yeah, I think these were single crochets and I did half double here, but oh well. It's done. And I definitely like the first color combo better. It looks much better. So I'm not sure if I'm going to make any more of these. I think I'll just take these ones plus the other crochet bags that I made. Um, I'll try them at the craft fairs this time around and see how they sell. And if I want to make more of those. So we got that cleared off the table, which is good. And I think that's it. We can start cutting out the fabric for our new guys. So I'll trade that over here. So we are doing the Finch Hobo bag. Not a lot to this pattern. It's really the shaping here that makes it such a beautiful bag. And the fabric, obviously, this is a big 
this is a big fabric focus for this and really shows off whatever fabric you're using. Um, I like the fact that the handles are the, the other fabric and they're just sewn in. So we don't really have any hardware. We have a zipper and that's about it. And you'll see here the way we're cutting the pieces out, they have a curve so that when you sew them together, they kind of puff out. So that's what we're doing here. I tried making a mini version of this one. So I printed out the pieces at 80% scale because this was kind of big for me. I mean, it's a perfectly normal size hobo, but for some reason I was looking, you know, for a smaller bag. So I printed it at 80% scale, which is really small. Looks like a really cute little girl's purse is what it looks like. But we're gonna go with the 100% on this one. So the only weird thing about this is you can't really put a pocket in because of this curved edge, uh, a pocket doesn't really fit in there. So that's the only thing I don't like about this pattern is not really being able to do a pocket. You could sew like a teeny pocket in here, but it's not really gonna be anything big enough to give you what you want. So I think that's it. So you could do, yeah, you could do like leather or cork handles. I'm just gonna do it out of the out of the lining fabric because I really like this fabric. So I think the stripes will be cute. Just have to figure out which way I'm gonna do the stripes, long ways or short ways for the handles. That should be cute. I think I'm also gonna have enough of this to make the Maya wristlet. So one thing we've gotta get cooking on, which we might do in one of the next few episodes, is make some of the Maya wristlets so, um, yeah, this is a great small pattern, and I think I sell these for $22. I can't remember what they were. They're just, they're smaller and a uh, lower priced item than a lot of my bags. So I'd like to, I've got a bunch of scraps that I can use to make these up with. I've got a whole box, a whole box full of um, fabrics ready to go for this. I might even be making like 10 or 12 of them at this point. But so I want to have a bunch of these made up for the craft fairs because they are a lower priced item. I think they would move a lot better. To figure out how we want our stripes. I would kind of like the stripes long ways for the handles, um, but I kind of want them going this way for everything else, horizontally. I just don't know if I'm going to have enough for the handles if I cut it this way. Let's take a look at what the handles are supposed to be. 4 by 18. I need two of those. So 18's not bad. Um, maybe I should just cut 18 to start with and cut the handles out just so that I know I can have them that direction. Are taking away our old our old tape you can see that it gets chewed up by all those clips that I use they kind of run over the tape and it gets chewed up or it gets caught on the edge from the fabric coming through or gets like pieces of this fusible fleece stuck in it so we're gonna do a new piece of tape and our seam allowance for this one is three eighths of an inch which I technically I technically have a 3 8 of an inch on my machine. It is the 10, 
but we're just going to help it along here by marking it. It just helps my eyes to have that green line to go off of. I'm going to kind of tuck the end under. If I'm smart, I leave, I leave the end long enough to tuck under here so that it doesn't get caught by everything. I'll do that. And then we're just going to sew this edge together at 3 eighths of an inch on our two and a half millimeters back stitch front and back. <clears throat> and the trick when you're doing a curve like this is to not line it up until it's right where the right where the foot is. So you know if you line it up all the way back here you're in the wrong place. So you really this is where the tape helps too. So you just want to follow that gentle curve as you're going, but you want it to line up right when you get to that point. So you don't have to worry about the fact that down here it's not lined up. That's okay. Okay. So this pattern is deceptively uncomplicated. It's not really a lot of steps, but this is the hardest part is getting this, this curve ironed out. So let's go tackle that part. Okay, this is the tailor's best tool. It's called a ham, mainly because it looks like it's the shape of like a Christmas ham. Um, you've got two sides here. You've got kind of a cotton linen side, and you've got like a wool side. So I tend to use, I actually tend to use the middle part for things that I'm doing, like the thing we're doing right now. It just helps you get that 3D effect. So we're gonna drape our piece over the ham, kind of stretch it out, and then we're gonna open up our curve here. So I'm gonna start at the beginning. You kind of want to match the ham up to the curve of your piece. And then I'm gonna do it this way. Now with the fusible fleece, I don't really want to melt the fusible fleece, but we're just going to follow that curve, just getting these down enough so that when we take it back to the sewing machine, we can do the top stitching on either side of this. So we just want to reinforce that curve, get these pieces to lay down flat or smooth. Not really flat. So in my opinion, this is really the hardest part of this pattern. So if you have a ham and can do this, then you have the power to make this pattern. I would not suggest doing this unless you have something rounded. I do have one of those I do have one of those arm tailor things, but even that's not going to give you that rounded curve that you need for this. So as we get to this really tight curve, you're going to need this top part of the curve because it's a tighter curve. So you just kind of follow it around the ham, getting the curve you need. going to do is we're going to top stitch these curves in and I haven't poked the curve out it's still concave as you can see because I find it's easier to go through the machine concave so we're going to do that now so an eighth of an inch on either side of this and I just want to make sure when I lay it down that it really is under there that it hasn't twisted back and then just gonna have to kind of check that every once in a while, pull these two pieces apart and go for it. Okay, so you've got that beautiful top stitching. It's just a very elegant touch on there. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. 
Nice thing about my Juki feet foot is that it's split in the middle, <clears throat> so I can use the same foot for both sides here without having to turn it upside down. Okay, and there we have it. I'm gonna push it convex for us, and that's kind of the cool 3D-ness of this pattern. You can't really see it now, but you will see it in the end. So I'm just gonna continue on, do the same thing with the other side, and then do the same thing with those, the lining, the lining and the lining pocket. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna piece our outside pieces together. Just like any other bag, we're gonna line these up. And so this with 3 eighths of an inch too. 3 eighths is kind of a nice number. It's usually like a half an inch or a quarter of an inch, and a quarter seems too short, like it's not as forgiving and a half seems too big, like you're wasting a bunch of fabric. So I appreciate the 3 eighths of an inch thing. So what I'm gonna do, these are both curved different directions. I'm gonna curve one concave, one convex, so that they line up better. I'm gonna make sure these two bottom pieces line up, which they should. And I'm just gonna go all the way around. I have already watched Practical Magic again. Um, it's been a couple of years, and I did see all the Woodby Island stores on the, you know, the the main drag. So that was fun to see all those places I just went to. And then we are going to use pinking shears to trim the seam allowance to a quarter of an inch, so that this whole curve has. A little ways to go. I do have pinking shears. It's been a while, they're all dusty. But I do have them. my usual. I'm going to make sure the one with the seam is on the inside and these are going to be centered in here. If you push it a little past past the line here, um, it'll give you a more stable seam. It. We're getting a late start this morning. It's 11.45. We got a lot of stuff done yesterday. So, I'm not feeling too bad about it and my sister's not coming to pick me up until 5.30. Plenty of time. We got our Soleil Mango sparkling water. Just like Loving these sparkling waters right now for some reason. Probably because it's 90 degrees. Okay, so we're gonna continue on with our zipper. And we're almost there. Oh, so good. Okay. Okay, so we are gonna sew these guys down. We're gonna go all the way from here to here. Um, I'm gonna just skirt past this, so I'm probably gonna do a quarter of an inch there. And then when we turn it out, these will be folded under. So just wanna catch that. So let's go sew this guy down.
This is what I love about lazy Sundays. <laughs> the dogs are just zonked out on the couch. Good. Oreo does the tongue out thing now. I don't know what that's all about, <laughs> but super cute. Doggies all curled up on the couch while I'm working on my bag. Okay, I think I'm gonna raise you up a little bit. Oh, I'll get a higher perspective here. This bag is pretty big. Okay, so she wants us to use the pinking shears again. I don't know how well that's going to work, but let's give it a shot. All these curves, it is just easier, but I don't know. to buy scissors like this that don't have that right-handed curve that are just kind of a straight curve but any scissors like this that are made to be comfortable for your right hand are very uncomfortable for your left hand okay done with the painful part and to turn it out. Okay, so here is our finished bag. I'm gonna give it a good press because it got wrinkly. But you can see it, here's our zipper. And we're going to tuck our end down in there. So that's what it looks like from the top. And then we've got our nice giant center here with our slip pocket. So very cute. And our handles. I think that's it. So that is it for the Finch Hobo. We are done, and it is 1.15, so that took us, what, 11.45, 12.45, so that's an hour and 30, so 90, let's add it all up here, so that's not bad at all, 6.6, .6, let's round up, 6.7 hours, I don't want to write 6, 6, 6. Okay, so that's good. Check, we are done with that. And yes, six and a half hours isn't bad at all, especially for this large of a bag. I can't remember what I priced this at the first time, but I'll look back at that. It's probably priced about the same as my other handbags. So I'll show it to you, um, I'll show it to you in a minute in the outro. And you'll be able to see what it looks like on my shoulder and everything. But Hey friends, so that's it for this week. Thank you for joining me. Had a fun week making our Finch Hobo. Let's take a look at it. It's so cute. <laughs> I say that every time. So it's just a really nice 3D bag. It's kind of hard to get the feel for how 3D it is. I don't know if you can see it that way. Uh, just a very poofy hobo bag. I'll put it on so you can you can see what it looks like on. Okay, so you get more of a feel for it this way. So here it is on. It's got just enough space on the handles and the little dip to go under your underarm. So it fits under there perfectly and nice and big as you can see. So yay, super cute. So as always, I love it when you come and spend time with me under the lemon tree. And I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. And next week, we will start on some interesting craft fair items.
that we could possibly be selling in the fall. So hope to see you next Saturday, and I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. Love you, friends. Bye. Bye.